Do you want to see you? Do you guys want to generate <laughs> some serious content? It's your idea. No, this guy's filming. I, I need to watch what I say when this guy's filming. Like, Why? He's not going to post yeah. shit that makes you, like, that I, sheds a bad light on you. Sit down. I trimmed, I trimmed out yeah, some of the stuff from the vlog yesterday. I don't know, I know how long you have. Vlog I was not Why, were you looking to work out again? Yeah, I yeah. am. Oh, really? Actually, and I got to read the class outline. Well, yeah. And I got to study for my PhD lectures. It took you 28 minutes to do that vlog. Well, I mean, how long did it better. take you? Buddy. <laughs> did he beat me? Of course I beat you. Yeah, but not by much. Two in a row. Two in a row. Dude, what? you're a time chaser. You're a fucking perpetual time chaser. I was not a time chaser. Today you're a time chaser. I was so you're like, hey, if I do, here. if okay. I average this, I'll beat him. That's okay. what you said right before. I'm going off of three weeks of vacation. That's all you. See, I told you that. You, yeah. that beat me a couple times. you guys got to sit a little. I'm actually. Yeah. It's embarrassing that I beat you yesterday. Yeah. I'm yeah. Really embarrassed by that. I'm embarrassed. Okay, good. I'm very embarrassed. Okay. What do you mean? Why? Because it's 2:25, dude. I was moving kind of nice though. You listen. The camera was on yesterday, okay? <laughs> and everything that you were doing. I you, you stole the yourself. camera. You guys would crush me. If you weren't why. yourself. Yeah, you were setting it up. Listen, he did get that. I was man. born to be a vlogger. Okay? <laughs> Should I sit back like this? Or no, 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 no. You gotta, you gotta get a little closer. Yeah, to you gotta get closer. No one That's watches why this. Kind of, people yeah. are gonna listen to it. I think some people will still watch a lot of people. We need to get better audio yeah, here than more people will listen. Yeah. yeah. All right. I listened to Pete's Fire. regional Fire. recap. That was first good. Vcast podcast. Oh. All three of us. All four of us. <laughs> it is all the first one. First one with all of us. Oh, yeah, that's that's fun. Topic today: programming in the sport of CrossFit over the years, mm. where it's come from, where it's going. Nice. Our impressions. On that. Our impressions. So let's start. Let's just start not games, because I know that's where the conversation is going to go, and I want it to go there. But let's start not games. When CrossFit was first founded, like. OG main site workouts, what was it like? Like obviously not, I don't think any of us started in 2001, but from what you guys have seen, what what do you remember it being founded on? What were the workouts like? Different from now kind of thing. You guys probably did it more often. I don't, I honestly don't think it's that much different, man. It's the same shit, it's fucking hard. Yeah. Yeah. But I know, so like for example, you always hear about how now with the push to CrossFit Health, it was built as a Navy SEAL program that's being tailored to grandmas. Was it like really gung, like do you guys remember like being really gung ho, like a workout like today on the regular? Cause I remember you always hear about people talking about like getting their buddies into CrossFit back in the day. It was like, you just try to kill them. You know what I mean? <laughs> like there wasn't the affiliate back then. I feel like well, the it was just, you, you try to kill them. It's, it's just different. There wasn't the awareness around scaling. Mm -hmm. I think back then it was just like, this is the main site workout. We're forging elite fitness and it's still that way. I think all the workouts from the dawn of CrossFit.com have been hard yeah. for elite, main size elite hard. CrossFitters, but there just wasn't the awareness around proper scaling and intended stimulus and things like this. Right. So like you look at the first workout, uh, we always talk about it, so it's just in my head. It's like the first workout at CrossFit.com ever. It's 21.15.9, correct me if I'm wrong. It was 21.18.15. 21.18.15, dumbbell thrusters, yeah. and 400 meter run after each round. Mm -hmm. And it just says, go as heavy as you can on the thrusters. Right. So like we legitimately- Does it say go as heavy as you can says, unbroken? Yeah. Or just as heavy as you can? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So if you legitimately did that right now, that's the first ever workout, like you get crushed. Absolutely mm -hmm. destroyed. So yeah. it's not really, but Something. that's why I don't think it's changed because any workout the main side programs like no exactly it's, it sucks yeah I think what we were talking about the other day was was when we programmed Helen for the class I just think that workouts like that like uh, three rounds you know 400 meter run 21 kettlebell swings at 53 pounds and 12 pull ups I just think that that workout now is hit a lot differently than it was you know let's say probably like seven or eight years ago when it was actually designed. Because yeah, sure. people are getting fitter. People are getting fitter and, and people, you know, at 21 kettlebell swings, you know, at 12 pull-ups, like mm -hmm. a workout like that just becomes more like a, a running workout. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's what I was talking about the other day. Because where it's just the like, used to be more technical. Exactly. Yeah. Nobody was butterflying back then. So it was yeah. just like 12 yeah. pull-ups at the end of the, that workout. Mm -hmm. If you had to do that workout in KIPP, you know, it'd probably be a different story. Yeah, it'd probably be harder. Yeah. So like the same parallel is to like a workout uh, like like right. Nicole or, yeah. or friend, or, yeah. Or even if you use Helen as an example, like when CrossFit started, the butterfly kit didn't exist. So no. people were probably doing that workout with strict pull-ups. Like people who just saw that on main side. I mean the probably, kip, the kipping pull-up. I mean the butterfly kip, the kipping pull-up, but even the kipping pull-up, like that was a high skill movement early in CrossFit. 
So someone like me who saw that workout on main site mm -hmm. that saw like pull-ups, mm -hmm. I would just probably do strict pull-ups. Yeah. Like the first time I walked into a CrossFit gym, I did strict pull-ups. I didn't kip. Mm -hmm. Same. Yeah. But so, I like I my buddy had told me that you could kind of use your body to move, so I would like do not some, super yeah strict. some yeah, weird ass like jerk mm -hmm. yeah jerk on the bar. Mm -hmm. So that's a, it's weird, right? It's a tough question because you'll look at these workouts and if we were every time we do a benchmark workout, whether it's you know Cindy, it's just body weight or like Grace, and that's another example. Like a, if you imagine like a barbell, um, a barbell benchmark, it's like it's is it the same as it was like right. well the, no one was the, doing that unbroken exactly it's like that, did, did that, glassman or, or whoever made grace up think like you know this is an unbroken workout no back then it was probably like this is gonna crush people i'm trying to find trying and now to it's right well it kind of goes it goes kind of goes like hand in hand with what we tell our athletes when they start crossfit it's like it doesn't get easier you get better mm -hmm. yeah. right yeah. so it's like you're gonna, you, you might come into this sport with like a five minute friend and it's gonna hurt a hell of a lot. And then as you get better, you bring that down to like a two and a half minute friend and it's still no, gonna it's hurt still just gonna as hurt. much as it did when, it, when you did it in five minutes. So is the question like, did was the intended stimulus the same back then as it is now? That's the question. Yeah. yeah. Like friend, no, it, it, and the answer is no. Cause, oh, right, right, right. Right, because Glassman, remember when you put out to the world, this is a story, I'm not actually 100% sure how it, it happened, but he basically put out to the world, if anybody ha beats this guy at Fran, I'll uh, give him something or what was it, Pete? Do you know? We, who, we, who was the guy? We tell this story Peter. at the level one. Stuff. No, it was uh, Greg Edmondson. Greg Edmondson. Who was the, the original fire breather and he did, uh, he did Fran in like four minutes or like three minutes something. Yeah, yeah. And this was back then and like beating four minutes in Fran. Like Come on, we, Jeff. We program Fran at, at an affiliate level and then we get, you know, uh, I don't know, tons of people going under four. Mm -hmm. uh, thank oh, you. Uh, oh, How many blocks? I don't know. That's, that's, just, some, that's just a couple of veggies. Jesus. That, that doesn't even count. Can it's you take a bite of that, that for me? Are you going to eat that? Can you one? stare at those listening? <laughs> he just got a full circular cucumber. He just put very deep into it. Uh, he just took a Big, big old bite. Yeah, 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 yeah. Half of it. Well, okay, so how about this? What's the, what do you guys think's the evolution, the answer of that? Because, like, you doing Grace Unbroken, mm -hmm. like, Velner talked about it not long ago. I think it was on a podcast where it's like, I heard that. That's only so effective at the top level. Once you can do Grace Unbroken, it's like, you're not really gaining anything from doing it unbroken again. So, is it, like, what is it? Is it more reps? Is it just trying to move maybe a little shittier so you can move faster? Like, I think, you know, I think there's, are, there, like, you can argue that. Like that's not such a cut and dry answer that it gave. But just a little side note, Wednesday last week they programmed at CrossFit.com was Grace or Isabel. Mm -hmm. Those you know, so those they're still programming those workouts. Yeah, yeah, no, I know, yeah, yeah for and, sure. Um, they still suck. see that all the time. They, they still, still suck. suck. Whether suck. you do it unbroken, like if you you're telling you can do me, something unbroken yeah, slowly. You're telling me that a one that a sub two minute grace unbroken. <laughs> like maybe in terms of your training like you're not going to regularly regularly revisit that workout mm -hmm. as a as a training tool to push your fitness progression further because you only have like you reach that pinnacle in terms of like your maximum output and even your potential max output but let's say you train and train and train testing it i think is very valuable at that weight because if you can shave one second off your 140 grace like that tells you a lot about how much faster you've got. Well, and let's get something you know? straight too. Let's clarify something. Doing something unbroken, it does not mean doing something faster. Mm -mm. You know, like you can you can well, do exactly. an unbroken grace in two minutes, mm -hmm. but break it up and do it in one forty way faster. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's like, and what 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 proves to be to generate more fitness mm -hmm. for the faster time, right? Mm -hmm. So. I just I, I don't like when people say like, oh I did that unbroken. It's like well how fast did you do? I give a shit that you did unbroken. Yeah. Did you do so it fast? The impetus like you see a lot of people nowadays saying things like that where it's like maybe the maybe that variation isn't tough enough and so you you know you go heavier with the Helen you do chest the bars you do grace heavier like so you don't agree that that's just like a natural evolution that's going to become a thing you you believe there's always going to be a place for these. Absolutely, because yeah, I'd rather I'd rather do Grace at two twenty five than at one thirty five. I'll tell you right now. Same. Yeah. You know what I mean? And and we use that example all the time in the level ones. I know Jason uses it all the time. It's like, would you rather do Fran at ninety five pounds or one fifty five? 
The answer is probably 155, right? Because you're gonna have to put the bar down. Mm -hmm. You it's know that at 95 longer. pounds, you have, you cannot put the bar down. You have to go. Yeah, it's gonna take longer. And then when you put the bar down, your heart rate can come down a little bit. So, mm -hmm. like, I, I think there's always gonna be a place in in CrossFit for those for those workouts. Yeah. It's just what I was asking originally is. Was the stimulus, the, was the intended stimulus the same when they were made up as they are now? Probably not. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean that there's no no place for those workouts yeah. today. And I wanted, like the point that you said about a second off of one, 140, like in the example of grace, it's even, it's less time, right? Like an unbroken grace is a minute, minute and 10, yeah. you know? It's like if you can shave a second or two yeah. off of that, like in terms of percentage yeah. of improvement, yeah. It's huge. Yeah. Absolutely. And that's and and what you improved over 30 reps is not strength. Right? Cuz mm -hmm. if you did it on broken, you know, a year ago and you do it on broken again, like, I don't think your strength levels are are different. And if you've got a better time, you've improved your 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 technical efficiency of that movement. Mm -hmm. And that improves your fitness, right? So, so um there's be, room for it. It'd be kind of along the lines of like just because Usain Bolt can run the 100 meters in under 10 seconds doesn't mean he's gonna wear a weight vest to do it. He's gonna try and shave a millisecond off. You see that as like a mm -hmm. similar comparison. But he could use a weight vest to train for it and shave that, you know what I mean? Like yeah. he could use that as an implement to try to get the means to, to his end, which is a second off his 100 meters, yeah. which is like, which that stimulus changes like you're talking about. Mm -hmm. So the workouts become different training tools mm -hmm. for people, for different people because your time domains get shorter, you know? PT starts out CrossFit, let's say, and he, I don't know what his time, time was when he actually started, let's say Grace was five minutes. Mm -hmm. that, okay, that's a five minute workout for him, so he's working within that time domain. Now it's a one minute workout for him. Mm -hmm. So he needs to add weight to the bar if he wants to do a clean and jerk workout mm -hmm. in a five minute time domain, mm -hmm. which is important if, you're, if your goal is to get good at all time domains, right? So there's a time and a place to add weight, there's a time and a place to do the sprints, it's all good, mm -hmm. it's all mm -hmm. good stuff. Cool. Yeah. Okay, let's stay away from the games for one more sec, but I want to talk about even just volume within the affiliate. So like as CrossFit began for a long time, everyone believed it was like one workout a day, one workout a day, nothing. What what was the catalyst for that evolution to now most, I'd say most even regular CrossFitters probably hit two things a day, a skill and a workout, or maybe the class wad and then a little extra. Like mm -hmm. what was the impetus for that evolution? When did that kind of all start? And why is there more volume now? I think that's like a, that's a, that's a big question. That's a loaded question because on an affiliate level, it's, it's almost a question we can dive into the business of, of running an affiliate mm -hmm. and keeping people happy and having people, you know, come into the gym and enjoy their hour yeah. and, and thinking that they get the most out of that, that hour. And then you can take it to like a, a pure fitness level or a, a fitness standpoint, whereas you know, is that the best for your fitness day in and day out? And then we can talk about that. Um, so the, 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 the more, um, the more stuff in that hour, not necessarily better. And CrossFit has tried it, you know, the CrossFit for a little while on com, they tried to put two things in that, uh, on their programming. Mm -hmm. Did they? Yeah. I didn't even know that. They like tried it out. Like a rest component? Yeah. Like, yeah. Or not necessarily, just like two workouts, two workouts and then like, hey, try these two workouts in a day. Right. Uh -huh. um, and it, it didn't really work. And it well, just... Like, I, I think a lot of affiliates, just like traveling around a little bit and just like going to other affiliates, I think too many affiliates try to do too much. Mm -hmm. Like they don't, like... I mean, it's. I feel like it's been a couple of years now where we've like included heavy days and like just like, you know, day intensities like provides results, right? Mm -hmm. So I think a lot of affiliates, like I've seen some affiliates, it's like warm up, like crazy warm up, imam, this skill, strength, wad, and it's just like the, you've put so much in the class that the class has lost all intensity. Mm -hmm. So, like that's not ideal for like. And we make our athletes athlete. feel that sometimes. Mm -hmm. Just as a little side note, side tangent or whatever. A couple weeks ago, remember when we programmed two workouts in one day? And was that, it like an EMOM and an EMOM? Yeah. yeah and that, they were like that se no, it was an EMOM and an AMRAP. And that second uh, AMRAP, uh, like I remember watching people. Was it, oh, the, was the row the G yeah, it was the row one even that we did the other day. Yeah. yeah. And, and it's, it's almost like we programmed those things as like a teachable moment to people <laughs> and make them understand like, hey, did you go as hard as you actually 
could on the second yeah, workout yeah. and everyone's like no i was That's dead true. from the first one it's like yeah. well there you go yeah right if you were to hit that first workout before this the 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 emon that we did you would have done significantly better mm -hmm. so and and we kind of use that as, as an example to show like guys this you know and, and we like we made that mistake in the past where we program way too much like we program way too much and it's it, it didn't like it's not ideal mm -hmm. if, if you program like a Fran and you know you ramp up with like a thrust like you build up to a heavy thruster before like that's enough work mm -hmm. like I j yeah I just think that's like a flaw in programming that most affiliates run into is like over programming because mm -hmm. they because they feel like over programming and more to yeah because over programming and under coaching yeah. yeah in terms of where it started though yeah to answer your question you got to remember that CrossFit is still young mm -hmm. so the people who started doing CrossFit very early on are still doing CrossFit. Mm -hmm. Right, and and across that span, these people like you start. Greg Glassman starts CrossFit with no idea of how fit people are going to get. Mm -hmm. Like he knows they're going to get fitter, but he's no freaking idea. Yeah. You know what I mean? And they do workouts, and then all of a sudden, like the thing with intensity is it has to be maintained. But at some point, if you want to get fitter. Okay. You need to be able to maintain that intensity, but also the whole purpose between a three on one off is to in maximize the volume. You also need to maximize your volume while maintaining intensity. Mm -hmm. And the fitter you get, the more volume you can do mm -hmm. while maintaining intensity. And that's the name of the game, right? Is like all these people who are doing, who have like 10, 15 years of training experience, you know, the, these are the guys at the top of the games and stuff, mm -hmm. right? They're able to do all this volume and maximize intensity across the board. Mm -hmm. Whereas when they first started training on year one, they couldn't. Mm -hmm. And it's just, and now these people are coming in the same shoes that they had on in year one, but then they're seeing them 15 years progressed and they're like, I want to do that. Mm -hmm. But they can't, they need to start at ground zero. They need to start at one workout a day. Right get fitter first right. and then later on start talking and add more and more but then what, at what point is, is the more too much when your intensity goes down. exactly yeah. so, yeah. That's, so you, that's the whole purpose of you know making sure you're writing your stuff down keeping your yeah. log yeah. and it's a beauty of CrossFit right? yeah. and, and that's and so to bring it back to like the affiliate level like a lot of affiliates program a lot in that one hour because guess what there's oh, there's man. people in that hour that could probably handle that volume right and there's people in that in that class that shouldn't or mm -hmm. can't. So it's it's up to the coach to kind of gauge that. Mm -hmm. um, and and it happens every single day yeah. where we have, let's say, hey, build to a heavy this, and then we do a workout. In that class, there's people who are actually building to a heavy, yeah. and there's people who are focusing sandbagging on it yeah, sandbagging or sandbagging it, but like working on their technique and not necessarily pushing the, the intensity. Yeah in the first portion of the workout but net but just working on specific little things yeah, yeah. well like yesterday like i knew 225 squat cleans in the workout were going to kill me mm -hmm. so i was real reluctant to try to hit 225 for the five front squats yeah. beforehand whereas yeah maybe it was one or the other but that's also like that's just me in myself like if i was coaching myself i would have been like suck it up and hit it like yeah you know go heavy don't worry about yeah, it yeah. but you know what i mean also i kind of forced you you did force me yeah <laughs> definitely i did not want to do that right. i was like he's gotta get strong Let's yeah go. <laughs> didn't realize how much i <laughs> suck at squatting um okay you brought it up good segue i want to start segueing more into crossfit as a sport now so we've talked a little bit about the affiliate and the evolution there but I mean, you can't really talk about that without talking about the influence of the sport across it because I mean, the reason why, like you mentioned, people see and want to do more and more and more is because you see people posting 12 workouts a day on Instagram a lot. So let's let's start at the beginning. CrossFit Games, first CrossFit Games, 2007. It was like, what, four workouts in two days, was it? I think it was more than that. Something. It was low. I know 2009 was only four workouts for sure. What? Oh yeah, 2009, 2009 was only at four. the games. Yeah, at the games. Because yeah, it was a well, at 2007, 2008. I think it was just one day, right? Or, yeah, it was, or was it just it was one like day? Or two days, maybe with two workouts each day or yeah. something like that. I'm not too good with that history, actually. To be yeah. honest, I don't know. But I mean, it, was, it was four workouts for sure in 2009. 2009. You got the documentary. Yeah, they yeah. Go through that's it right now. The run. Yeah, it's the deadlift. deadlift. Yeah, the, the hammer thing. The hammer. No, they didn't even have that. Or 
Wasn't that one of them? That was earlier. I don't know. They didn't. That was earlier. earlier. Oh. And then it was uh, the, the same first thing time. The first time they did chest of bars. Uh-huh. It was like a brand style chest of bar workout. Didn't they do? And then it was. They had a muscle up. It was w- the Jason Kalipa one that w- won it because. Two thousand nine. Two thousand nine. Oh. Two thousand nine was the Sandbag run. That was Miko Salo. Oh yeah, you're right. Sorry, my bad. I'm totally off. But anyway, still four workouts. Yeah. So yeah. Same era. Point being, it's like you said, it's not like Game started four workouts. How were people training back then for the games? Four workouts in over two days. Were people doing one workout a day back then? I don't know. I don't know. Either. I, I assume they were. I, yeah. Maybe you know. I, I know that's people were weightlifting because, like, you could tell by the way people were. Like, did you watch the videos of that? The max snatch. Well, I don't know what year that was. It was, it was 2008. Garbage. It was yeah. still at the ranch. Like, yeah, it was. I think incredible. that's when like weightlifting really took off in the sport because people realized like. They were terrible at it. Mm-hmm. I think there was like Josh Everett was the only actual weightlifter, mm-hmm. and he was like split snatching. Yeah, and Pete and he like won. Too, yeah. I think, and like people just kind of started like dabbling into that a little bit more. Mm-hmm. But like most people that were snatching back then, it was some horrible yeah. looking stuff. Yeah, I think the evolution of wh- where we're going towards is is basically exactly what Pete says. Like when it started, like nobody knew how fit people could actually get, mm-hmm. and I think we're still at that point. Like. Yeah. How fit are people getting? Like, how fit is Matt Frazier gonna get? Or more, <laughs> yeah. you know, like, what, yeah. what's he gonna do next? You know, yeah. like he won, he won the games last year, and almost won every single goddamn event. Yeah. Like, is he gonna win every event this year? Yeah. Is Dave gonna put another day this year to be like, well, they can take, they took on all the, the volume last year? Like, we don't I think know. They're still trying to like, I think, I, I, I mean, I could be wrong, but I think like. Dave, starting at the regional level, tries to Im- make an implement that tries to completely, like, he wants to stop people in their mm-hmm. tracks. Mm-hmm. And, like, you know, we've seen that in the past with, like, the pegboard and, like, mm-hmm. um, you know, the handstand walk and the strict muscle-ups. And, like, there's just always these, like, next-level programming things that are, yeah. we're seeing right every year. Push-ups, like, uh, so, and, and the, the sport is continuing. The sport and the athletes are continuing to, like, prevail mm-hmm. through these yeah. things so mm-hmm. like i think you're just going to keep seeing that like every year you're going to see dave throw in like a new implement that's going to try and stop people in their tracks mm-hmm. and people are going to you know push through that and right then, you know the next year you'll see something else and like it's just going to keep going yeah well because like the reason i brought that up initially was the first three years there was like four workouts something like that there was a pretty drastic shift in like 2010. 2010, yeah. they went to Carson. They had a whole weekend long, and I think there was like eight or nine events. That's a big jump, real quick. And then from there, it's been kind of a steady growth. But like you said, there's always been something like a wrench thrown in along the way, and the movements have been getting harder and harder and harder. And the volume has been building. Yeah. What have you guys noticed about the programming changes, though? Like aside from just like throwing in hard obstacles, like do you see like the workouts of the games going in a certain direction? What's been the like? I know they're heavy. So like 2012 to probably 2015, there was a lot of max events. You don't see that so much anymore. You see well, it at the you see it at the games. You yeah. see it at the games, and but that, I, yeah, you see it. At the games. It's, honest, very, it's very dull. Like you get you get dumbbell like barbell races. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it's not so much like a build to a heavy. There's always some sort of. But I guess the question is, what's changed? What's evolved? I don't think that much. Yeah, yeah. to be honest, like that's I don't, what's so awesome. About yeah, it, you literally cannot predict it. Mm-hmm. I mean, you do, there, you just do CrossFit, man. Like, what? That's all it is. Like, that's how you prepare for it. That's what you're going to be tested on. Yeah, we have no idea. And there's one person who has an idea, and it's Dave Castro, and that's all up in his head, and nobody knows. Mm-hmm. And he, I'm, I'm sure he has themes for regionals, and he could look back at every regional, every year, and games, and give you like a sentence to describe those games, mm-hmm. you know, or those regionals, and be like, 2013 or yeah. 2012, heavy. Or like, yeah. you know, 2014, it could be like fast. Or, or I've like, heard him talk about like a, a, an entire season being based around one workout. Yeah. And he like likes that workout. And then he just expands every workout from there. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. At, at the end of the day, it's a test, right? And if you look at, at the test from the day one to the last day of the test, he does a phenomenal job at hitting every component. like most components of fitness mm-hmm. you know from like short and fast to long Actually, and slow mm-hmm. to heavy to gymnastics yeah. mm-hmm. like if, if you t- if you write every workout out and you you kind of check off everything like mm-hmm. he hits everything yeah. like, it's, a, it's a perfect test every year mm-hmm. and i mean i think the athletes prove that it's a perfect test right the guy who wins the game the guy who wins the games wins his region and also wins the open so yeah the test works yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. throughout the season exactly and mm-hmm. as long as that happens then the test 
test works. But to, to answer your question, like I don't think a lot has changed. And I think that's also um, that's also his, his goal. Mm -hmm. Like a lot of the workouts, he'll reprogram workouts or he'll recycle workouts in the open like you see uh, every year. He'll reuse workouts at the games. Like remember in, um, was it 20, maybe it was 2013 that they recycled the 20, uh, 2007 workout. Yeah, it was the pull up one. Yeah. You know, so just to show that, I've seen Amanda a couple again, times. The, the, and the times were completely different. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that's what he likes the most about it too, is when he does recycle workouts, like, hey, look how much everyone is getting better. Mm -hmm. You see that in the open too, right? Yeah, so it, exactly, So and, and that's the whole point. Do you think though, like, so the Amanda one, that's a good one to talk about, because in 2010, it was Amanda, 975, squat clean, or squat snatch and muscle up, but was it last year or the year before, it was like last year. Amanda on steroids. It was like yeah. Yeah. almost double the well, amount. Before you even get there, yeah. 2010 they had Amanda, yeah. and it was a shit show at the games. Yeah, oh yeah, and, like, that the, video of Jason Khalifa Khalifa, snatching. Yeah. yeah. Then the following year they brought that to the regional level, and even at that point, like one year later, mm -hmm. people were crushing Amanda. Yeah. Like you, it wasn't like, I'd say the average time at that point was like a four or five minute Amanda. Yeah. So like, People saw what needed out. The evolution of Amanda happened in less than 365 days, mm -hmm. right? Like they brought it to the games in less than a year, mm -hmm. that 2011 regional, it's like, here's Amanda again. And mm -hmm. like, yeah. it's like, holy shit, what, look what we did with Amanda. Mm -hmm. you know? Do you think though, there's a reason why he programmed the extended version of Amanda as opposed to just regular Amanda? Is that due to an evolution in the athlete? Like it wouldn't be as entertaining of a test to watch them all do it unbroken in two minutes? <laughs> Good adjust. Yeah, it's, it's a, exactly, it's just a that's test. the answer. It's the different test and we, we like think of Amanda because it's the same movements and kind of the same rep scheme, but it's just different. Yeah. He could have programmed Amanda and it would have been maybe as entertaining because like you just said, who's going to do it unbroken, but mm -hmm. who's going to be doing it unbroken and fast. Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, it was just a different test. He probably yeah. needed something with, to fit within that time domain yeah. Yeah. because they probably saw something a little bit faster already. He hadn't programmed muscle ups and yeah. squat snatches at and, that point. And, and it's, but, it, but you're right. It's like the athletes can handle this, mm -hmm. you know, they're good enough. And, and it's that workout was like, you know, who can keep the muscle ups as unbroken or as efficient as possible while main, while, um, being good on the barbell. And it what wasn't were, about touch and go barbell. At the games last year, what were the sprint workouts? There was the, were, uh, the sledgehammer workout. Yeah. That was fast. That was, really that was fast. fast. Um, what were the other ones? Like I'm talking like, like CrossFit sub sprint. Five minutes. Yeah. Well, the the, the clean the yeah. clean bar muscle up was pretty fast. Oh, yeah, yeah was there was fast. the assault banger too. The yeah, assault banger. Yeah, the, that's right. There was um. There was the, the there obstacle some... course. That was yeah. quick. That Super was quick. fast. Right. That, that was, was quick. Yeah. That was quick. Yeah. So so I got all these little ones and the, all these workouts in small yeah. time domains. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You look at that. He hit it all, man. He hit it all. Let's talk open. Mm -hmm. Thoughts, opinions, thoughts about what the open program has been like last couple of years. We had and, how, and how to prepare for it. And how to prepare for it? Sure. Evolution of it. How to prepare for so it? Like, from that's one thing I love. Actually, just a side note. Yeah. It's when people say that they want to go to regionals, or they want to do well. You know, they want to do well in the open, go to regionals, and then I look at their programming, and it's filled with volume and heavy, stuff. heavy this oh, and heavy man. that, and it's just like, hey, do you do you know what the open is? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know how to get the regionals? Yeah, you have to finish this. Okay, what's the open? One workout a week at high intensity. It's so you have to get through that before <laughs> yeah. you people are gonna like, add the volume. Like, let's focus on that. On assault bikes and like hammer out shit on assault bikes, and they're just like, I'm getting ready for the open. It's like, fuck, like stick to the basics. Yeah, like, keep like it simple, man. Movements. Like, do some fucking wall balls, you know? Yeah. Like, but yeah, the open, the open this fun. year. The open yeah. this year was uh, just some benchmark workouts or something. Yeah, like I was talking about this, and like I personally didn't like it because I didn't do well, but I but I thought it was a good test of fitness. But there were some workouts for me. Yeah, I feel like you might agree with me. Like on paper, I'm like, okay, this is a good workout for me. And then like for whatever reason, like I just couldn't couldn't pull it together for that yeah. workout. Like the first workout, the total bar row, dumbbell clean and jerk. Like that on paper is like. You know, I'm an athlete that likes to work in a longer time domain, mm -hmm. 20 minutes, but I just couldn't couldn't figure it out. Mm -hmm. yeah. Where did you finish in that workout worldwide? In the first workout, 18.1. I was tied for fourth or third, third or fourth yeah, like in the five, world. Yeah, yeah but in that's world. only that because I programmed for him. <laughs> <laughs> that was a like, 
funny because none of those moves we ever did. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> Don't row. Stay off the rower, Pete. Yeah, you're, you're sick at them. Boss at rowing. But here's the thing, like with those, I, I thought that during the open there was a there was kind of a theme to every workout, right? That workout, the, what was the first workout theme? Oh, what was like long, long. No, like uh, tra transitions. Oh yeah. Like yeah. this guy, I don't know if you saw the video, but mm -hmm. his transitions were flawless, man. He would pull super hard on the roar, phenomenal roar. Get off the bar, get off like right beside there. He there's the bar. He would oh no the the dumbbell. The no the, no is the total bar. You're right. Total bar, that's right, he would do yeah. the total bar and the dumbbells right between his legs that's as soon as he drops, so, yeah. boom, Grab, grabs it. Yeah. So his transitions were flawless yeah. and he's obviously incredibly he fit. And his total bars, his total bars are phenomenal and, and so is his rowing. So like, but that workout for, let's say someone who's not that good at those movements, it was about maximizing those, or minimizing those transitions. Because mm -hmm. the reps were short, or the reps were not that. Yeah, the rep scheme was small yeah. for each thing. So, and people were getting tons of rounds. Mm -hmm. yeah. So lots of moving around with between three movements. But I mean, that was, that was long, man. That was gnarly work. That was gnarly. That was gnarly. Yeah, it's good fun. Yeah, it was, it was weird. But express like even, even, even like, you know, a guy like PT, like I would think mm -hmm. that he would do better than he did on that workout. Mm -hmm. He's a good rower, you know, like, it just, I don't know, that was, and then the, the skipping one, like, I just, I never, and this is why the Open's sick, because I never would have thought that they would, like, the emphasis would have been on double unders. Yeah. You know, I'm just like, oh, you know, you're just thinking traditionally, like, double unders are there, but they're never really significant. It's like, oh, yeah. plot twist, we're going to throw in a ton of double unders and see how you guys do yeah. it. Like, it's like, shit. Yeah. Like, what's, what's going and that, on? Like, that itself, right there, that like, kind of answers your other question you had about the games. Like, do you see any trends? Like, mm -hmm. you know, man, because you can't yeah, yeah. that. Like, well, so, it's, <laughs> like you said, it's so true. Because, like, I, like, not even close to your guys' level. But, like, when I saw the workout, I literally was, like, laughing because I was so happy. Because there's all these movements. I'm like, these are so good for me. I'm going to crush it. But in the workout, I did way worse than I thought. Like, I yeah. was dying on double it. I've never had trouble with an unbroken set of 100. I usually recover and I'm fresh. Yeah. Like, I was dying and on I, them. And I think everyone who does the open at whatever level can say the same about at least one workout every single year. Mm -hmm. Like I remember, I think two years ago, 2016 was it, uh, the barbell snatch and bar muscle up one, 10 mm -hmm. and three. Like when that came out, I was like, no problem. Like that's mm -hmm. great. Like mm -hmm. I'm gonna come top 20. Mm -hmm. In and, the world? No, in our region. <laughs> Cause, and I, I, I flopped hard, remember that thing? Well, you flopped with me. <laughs> what one was it again? The bar muscle up and the snatches. Oh yeah, like he came. He had there. a top world finish. Yeah, I, yeah. Thought I, was, I, I think that's your best open finish ever. Sixth. Sixth in, in the, the world. world. Yeah. But like him and I, like we were just like, oh yeah, we'll make it to regionals because we made it last year. Like that threw a fucking wrench in yeah. the game plan. Like we were like, totally. like I remember the rest of the open was like, like attack mode because yeah. we we screwed up. Oh yeah. yeah, that was yeah. But anyway, it just. That's the beauty of the open. Yeah, like you can goes, always intend on that. And then yeah. And no matter what you try to do in, the, in like preparing for the open, you will never be ready for what he's got up his sleeve. Yeah. <laughs> because it always changes. And people throughout the year, like how often do you hear it'll never be in the open? That'll never be so in the open. Mm -hmm. Don't do this. Don't worry about this. It'll never be in the open. Like handstand walking. How many people all year long? Would we would like speculate on the open? Be, people would be like, nah, there's no way to put hands in walk. It's too hard. Yeah, people well, guess what? You did it, man. Like, and before it was always like, well, muscle ups are always going to be at the end of the workout because he wants people to like. He wants to make it inclusive. Yeah, mm -hmm. no, like two years ago, muscle ups, boom, that was the first thing. Yeah, <laughs> you know, three years ago. So yeah. like, yeah. you can't, you can't predict what's going to happen, mm -hmm. and it's at every time you think that he's going to. You know, not do something. something you, just you know what? You know what's really as soon as you start being able to predict it, it's gonna get boring. You know yeah. what's beautiful exactly. about the it's entire process mm -hmm. is that it, it's in all the CrossFit literature. Like if you look up like pitfalls of programming, mm -hmm. yeah, exactly. like if you just follow that simple prescription that they tell you to, to follow for programming, for your affiliate, like it just back to the affiliate level, like it's all in there, man. Mm -hmm. You know, do do. Constantly vary stuff, like mm -hmm. do stuff that you don't do before. Dumbbell clean and hanging dumbbell clean and jerk. Like. Mm -hmm. And then have once in a while do some movement redundancy. Yeah. You know? And have three grip movements in one workout yeah. that last 20 minutes. There's, yeah. there's, yeah. No, yeah. there's no limit to the, the amount of combinations yeah. you can yeah. do yeah. when it comes to physical movements. It doesn't always right? have yeah. to be complimentary. So, 
So and that's good. We're going to keep seeing that every year. Yeah. Like next year, we're all going to get a workout that's going to be like, whoa, what, mm -hmm. what, why? What mm -hmm. happened? Like, so there's a bit of a linear progression to this. I'm going to ask you to park and stop me along the way. There's three tests in the in the CrossFit Games sport, right? There's three tests. There's you open, there's regionals in the games. I think we can all agree, you talked about it before, if you want to get good at the open, don't assault bike and lift heavy, do the 13 movements. So it's a capacity test in 13-ish movements. I know there can be some added, but for the most part, it's 13-ish movements. We're probably not going to have running, we're probably not going to have swimming, stuff like that in the open. Regionals is usually a bit more high skill and heavy, traditionally. And the games is where you see a lot of like the cardiovascular, the running, the endurance, the long stuff. Right, as well as everything else. As well, so what do you mean? Is thirteen movements just like the average number of movements? Yeah, the, there's a list that like Ben Bergeron put out a while ago that it was wow, thirteen okay. movements that have been in the open. There are more now, but for the most part, there's thirteen key movements that show yeah. up every year. Right. Yeah. Um, so as far as as far as the programming goes, though, do you do you see any world where we could have blending? Because like the endurance doesn't really happen to the games. There's probably been a workout, but like you're not really gonna have a five k run in the open. Do we think, or do you think there's any world where these three here, tests will here's, stop you? Here's what I tell people: stop thinking like that. Don't think like that. Like, be prepared for anything. Mm. You know, be prepared for absolutely anything, because he will throw it at you, mm. and you won't expect it, and you'll you'll be caught off guard. But like, you know, everyone said that about regionals. Like, oh, they, they won't have an endurance test at regionals because it's like not it's not a fan. It's not cool for the fans to watch. Like, we fucking saw triple three this year. Mm. It's a five. That's a long. It's like a f almost a fifty minute workout. You also, but then you gotta you gotta think of it in terms of like practical, a practicality standpoint too, from like a director's point of view. Yeah. Like you only have in the open. I mean, he could definitely. Yeah, he can add weeks. He could make a 30 minute he could, he could add weeks, right? And then you can start to get like run, a 5K run and stuff in there. But it has to be a balanced test up till now. It has to be a balanced test over five weeks, mm -hmm. right? So then, so you're like, you gotta, you're a little bit limited. Like you can't have a mon, you know. I mean, where you're going with that is like from- I never want, you never want to say can't. Yeah. No, it's but like the, I know, you know where you're going you with that. I mean? It's like, yeah, you have the open, like let's just talk about pass. And yeah. you know, it's five weeks, it's five tests. Yeah. At regionals, we have three days, and we have potentially more than six, seven tests. And all these people so have already made it proven there. Proven successful from those. Open exactly. Workouts. So let's throw in more stuff that we maybe haven't, haven't seen. Done. Exactly. And then whoever makes it from there goes to the uh, uh, the games where you have six days potentially of tests mm -hmm. over 12, 13 events, mm -hmm. and like what haven't we tested yet? That like hour long workout, and okay, let's throw that in. Yeah. But what you see is that. Workouts that are were in the open are still seen. That type of workout is still seen at regionals, and it's still seen at the games. Mm -hmm. I just think it's like at, there's more stuff added mm -hmm. that we couldn't test maybe in the previous stage. Good, yeah. good example of that is the uh, thruster double under. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they Some retested oh, yeah, the games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Saw that the games yeah. 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 yeah, that was an open workout. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly, heavy. exactly. Do you? Do yeah. you that was crazy. That was so but, crazy. That, but like, uh, just to, sorry, just yeah, to no. jump in. <laughs> The, uh, the age group qualifier this year, mm -hmm. I think, really showed us what is what the open could be, could potentially be. What was okay. different in that? I don't think I saw Rope was. climbs, handstand walks, every, yeah, yeah there was you no name terms. it, man. Like, he, they yeah, really yeah. took it to another level yeah. this year. So. Wasn't it the year before they did handstand walking? Wait, was there handstand walking in the age group before it came to the open? I don't, I don't think, think so. so. I don't think so. I think they it had, like, a, a, a strict handstand push-up, I think. Uh, uh, which was like, oh, we've never seen that. But like yeah. this year, this time around, the age qualifier was really some like max level stuff. Mm -hmm. And these th these things are they're calculated. Like yeah. Dave is smart. Their team is smart. What they test in uh, like the team series team format series. Yeah, yeah. is is that's data for them to see like what's possible at an affiliate level mm -hmm. for the open. Yeah. You know, and and what happens in the age group uh, qualifier mm -hmm. is a test. So like. Yeah, there could be rope climbs yeah. in the open next year. And people say, well, not every gym has 15 foot rope climbs. Like, well, guess what? People are gonna go and find those gyms mm -hmm. and find those facilities. Or, you know- 2014 is the first time there was a rower in the open. Yeah. And everyone was so butthurt about it. Mm -hmm. It's in every year now and now everyone, no one cares. Yeah. yeah. It's a same, you know, it's just like like dumbbells the mainstay yeah. or whatever. You yeah, know? and like just two years ago, dumbbells, like it just, just happens. Just going back to like CrossFit in the early days, like, Concept two rowers have been around since day one. Mm -hmm. Dumbbells have been around since day one. Yeah. So when they announce these things and people lose their shit, it's like, well, time out. Like, 
go back to main site. Yeah, it's been we've been doing this stuff. Like it's not you, new. you yeah. guys are the ones that aren't keeping up with like things that keep make you fit. Mm -hmm. And sure enough, people go buy ten rowers, and all of a sudden their gym's fitness increases by tenfold. Like, mm -hmm. and never, yeah. <laughs> and every time Dave throws in something new that might not be popular at an affiliate level, everyone's like, "Oh, people are going to stop doing the open." Well, guess yeah. what? The more every the year. numbers <laughs> increase every year. Yeah, everyone's got like some more sort people of are doing the open every single year. Uh, of course, you could say like, "There's more people doing CrossFit in general," and like, yeah. what's the percentage there of people mm -hmm. doing CrossFit versus people doing the open? But still, the numbers are increasing. Yeah. Well, even to that point, like I think people do have to remember that like, well, what's the point of the open? Like it's not necessarily to have five hundred thousand people doing it. It's to find the fittest people on earth to go to regionals, right? So like right, yeah. they don't really care. You know what I mean? To some extent, like they want it to be you know a community event and inclusive with the affiliate. But like if they want to put rope arms in it, they're gonna put rope arms in it. And this is what I tell people. Like even our own athletes, they're like, oh man, like the open's not really inclusive anymore. And I'm like, listen, they're trying to find the fittest people in the world. Yeah, it's not meant to be inclusive. Yeah. It's supposed to be the fun community building kind of thing at an affiliate level. Yeah. But like. Let's take a time out and recognize what the open actually is, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. And they've added the scale division, which is huge. Yeah, they're trying to be as inclusive as possible yeah, like because it is a huge community event. Like it's, yeah. I, the thing is, is it's through just, that, you'll find the fittest yeah. people. Well, it's not like yeah, someone's going to be like the NFL combine. It's too hard. You yeah. Know what I mean, it's like if you're going to the NFL combine, you're going there because you belong in the NFL. It's like, yeah. although it's, you know, we have people going to the CrossFit combine that might not be going to, you gotta remember it's still the combine. We're still trying to get PT and PT, you guys to regionals. And to do that, the tests have to be. And, and, and the beauty of that whole thing is those, those people that complain about that on three, two, one, go, half the time they end up surprising the shit out of themselves yeah. and being like, oh my God, I didn't know I could do that. Yeah, yeah that's no, pretty cool. So and then you're like, high five, yeah. the And then open the people rocks. that like completely, you know, com just don't do the open because they hate the fact that it's there. Like yeah. you're gonna get that anytime there's a an event of this scale. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How many people are doing the open this past year? I don't remember. I don't, I want to say over plus, four. Thousand? In, in the world? In the world, we're like 400,000. Yeah, I want to say like 400,000. Yeah. yeah, we're so close to five, yeah. So yeah, exactly. People are gonna, you know, people are gonna hate on it. Million they're people. Not, mm -hmm. They're not gonna want to do it. Not everyone's gonna do the open. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it's still growing, so that's exactly what they want. But yeah. if we bring it back to like, to programming and, and the evolution of programming and, and how to prepare for the open or, you know, affiliates programming too much in an hour, mm -hmm. you know, what are you preparing your athletes for? You know, often we'll just we'll just program one workout in, the, in that hour and it, the goal is to hit that workout like an open workout mm -hmm. because what do people do when they come to do the open workout and try to perform as best as they can in that workout during those five weeks they don't show up you know hit a heavy something mm -hmm. and then hit some accessory and then do the workout mm -hmm. no they come in they warm up properly mm -hmm. yeah. for that workout mm -hmm. they spend 15 20 minutes warming everything up mm -hmm. practicing the movements the bits and parts uh, the, the parts of the movements and then they hit that workout as hard as possible right. it's like how often do you actually do that right. in a week yeah it's seriously like, you know throughout the year or feel like you're gonna barf after a workout yeah. how many times it's do like you really hit that intensity and oh. we try we don't want people to show up in the open in our in our gym and experience that for the first time. Like we wanna, we, we hope, and obviously the adrenaline, the environment makes them feel yeah. something different and, and that's okay, we can't control that. Yeah. Like we want people to understand it and feel it like, you know, yeah. on, oh, this I'm prepared. happened. I'm prepared for yeah. just walking in, yeah. preparing for this one workout and giving everything I got. Yeah. Exactly. And that's how we program. Yeah, totally. Yeah, like if you're a garage gym crossfitter, like do a main site workout once a week and you'll be ready for the open, because it feels the same way. Like if you're not used to main site, and you do main site, yeah. like you're like, what the hell just happened? You know what I mean? It's the same as the open. Um, okay, real quick, themes. Have you ever seen a theme across a year from CrossFit Games programming? So like open to regionals to the games. Do you think there's ever been like a definitive theme, a bias perhaps that like certain athletes just succeeded and other reports? I'm gonna go with no. I, These I, guys might disagree. I'm gonna go with, with no in terms of like us actually knowing what the theme is, <laughs> but I guarantee you there is. There's probably yeah. some poetic like, theme that Dave Oh yeah, has, Dave for like, sure. Yeah, like I said, sure. Dave could talk to you about every single year. His book's coming out. That's yeah, cool. that's gonna be yeah. sweet. Yeah. Um, I hope I'm in it. 
help program last year. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But uh, no, I'm just kidding. But <laughs> I was saying, did you really that before? Well, I mean, when we're down there testing workouts, we contribute oh, right. to, to some of the stuff. Yeah, but um, I know that in like the the old school guys, they say like 2013 was was a heavy year. 2012, mm -hmm. 2013, especially at a regional level, were, were really heavy. Mm -hmm. what, um, did, uh, what did Lucas Parker call? Uh, was it two years ago? Was oh, he's the, got the, themes actually. Yeah, yeah. He definitely has the themes. Calf, That's right. The calf fit games. The, the calf fit the games. And, uh, and like, the bicep games were 2015 <laughs> yeah. when you, yeah, yeah, Murph, yeah, Murph, and and board. Murph and the pegboard. That was the bicep <laughs> game. <laughs> There's at least like. If you, you want know. to know themes, you gotta get Lucas Parker. But it's, I mean, in the last year, like Phil Kowski talked about, yeah, not being able to walk downstairs because the squats or something. Yeah. yeah. Like, Maybe I can't speak of like yeah. honestly without experimenting it and without actually doing it. You can't really talk about it, so I can only talk about the, the what themes that what yeah. I, what I felt during the regionals. Um, but like I remember, um, 2015, my quads yeah. were budded up. Yeah, are we, are we swearing on this? Yeah, okay, 2015, we the, the quads were messed up. I could like they were that was like the one part of my body that I walk out of the car. And I almost collapsed on the way home because it was so bad. It was yeah. the GHDs, oh, the yeah, that squats, yeah, the yeah, box over. CrossFit just reposted amazing. Jen's picture. That's I just amazing. got that. That's, That's really cool. Amazing. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, amazing. What else was in that <laughs> regional anyway? Tons of stuff. Sorry. Yeah. 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 Just all, all quads. Mm -hmm. And well, I mean, there's themes like last year. The th what was the theme at regionals? The, the dumbbells. Yeah. Yeah, um, exactly. Yeah, you know, that regional. This so, year, no barbell, yeah, no barbell, this year the theme I would say like was uh, generally a little bit more aerobic. Mm -hmm. there was, I mean, in terms of feeling, yeah, I didn't feel one. Did we talked about this. It was yeah, like, yeah. super well balanced in terms of body. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but he had that cool theme, which was like totally out in the open. Was the three monostructural movements, the three barbell movements, mm -hmm. and the three, three gymnastics, gymnastics movements. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Triplet, 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 back to back to back. Like yeah, it was kind of sick. Like that was cool. Yeah, three modalities. Yeah. in on their own. But it was totally workouts. balanced. Like I didn't feel yeah, cool. super okay. sore. You guys keep talking. Yeah. 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 Bye, people. Bye, Reza. See you, Reza. Yeah. Um, it's tough, right? Like you want to talk about the evolution of, of the of what we we've, we've observed, but it's like it's it's pretty similar. Yeah, it's been pretty similar. Mm -hmm. and, the only thing that you can kind of see is that there's only things that are added. You know, things aren't really taken out. Yeah. You know, and the thing too is like, is also, I feel like we protect ourselves against that thought process yeah. of trying to find themes and trying to dissect and over dissect the games. Because as soon as, as an athlete, you start to pretend that there's mm -hmm. actually themes mm -hmm. and thing and certain things you need to be doing more mm -hmm. than others, like you do, mm -hmm. you're not gonna do well. So don't, I mean, you, you know why? Because you don't fucking control that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. Let's, let's let's finish with that. That's an awesome yeah. thing I want to talk about. It. What advice would you? Because I'm pretty sure I know your opinions, but state them so these guys can hear. Yeah. On people who go crazy analytic with it, like look at all the past open movements and only do those, or look at all the past regional movements and only do those, and like, and basically a question of. Is that analytics? Does it have a place? Is it worth it? And also, how to train? Let's just go with the open because that's mm -hmm. where most people are. How, what's the best way to train for the open? And are the analytics and analyzing stuff and calculating what's going to come? Is that important? Yeah. I think that's important if you if that, if you enjoy doing that. <laughs> I don't think it's going to do anything. Um, if you want to geek out and and you know analyze all of that, sure. Uh, is it going to improve your fitness? No. There's two. There's two <laughs> ways that, this could, that it could be important. Number one, one, it could be important if you literally didn't prepare yourself at all the entire year, and you're waiting down to the last month before your competition, and you're like, how can I like? How can I? Uh, yeah, like January comes around. Yeah. Like, okay, what can I focus on for a month? Here? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Maybe. Yeah. Four cobbler. And then the other way that it could get valuable is if you're Matt Fraser with next to zero weaknesses and you're you're trying to stay ahead of the curve yeah you're trying to win that last workout and you need to analyze like what your smallest little weakness might be so you can get there yeah but for the rest of us man it's just do crossfit what's that look like crossfit.com and zero programming and you know ben bergeron <laughs> uh, it's constantly very functional movement at high intensity doesn't matter how you slice it so I don't know how you slice it. One workout a day, for the most part. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Um, cool. Increase your volume when your when your intensity doesn't suffer from it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Cool. Cool. That's good it. Job. Yeah. Good thanks. Job, boys. Uh, anything else you guys want to add before we finish? I think that's a good place to leave it off. Mm. Yeah. Just train hard. Yeah, these yeah, podcasts exactly. are funny, right? Like, I mean, I mean yeah. we could have a, a different podcast for like separate ta- tangents that we go on. Yeah. Um, leave it. Leave it on a note. Um, <laughs> to leave it on a note. Let's say. Don't overthink it. Is good advice. Don't overthink it and set up your goal. Yeah, exactly. Have a goal. There was a cool. There was a cool interview like way back. I saw Dave Castro say maybe it was in. It was one of the games at the ranch and he said Josh Everett you think Josh Everett's good because of programming it's like no you could program for Josh Everett I could program for Josh Everett Josh Everett's that's good because he has intensity mm. yeah. that's right that's in one of the old uh, lecture videos yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. cool cool yeah. all right intensity yeah. thanks boys thanks for listening guys uh, be sure to leave us a review on Apple if you're watching it there we're new to it there have a good day See you later. See you next.